Like the majority of the British public, I find the concept of trophy hunting, the killing of animals, especially those which are rare or endangered for fun, to be disgusting. And seeing images of hunters posing with an animal they have just killed makes my blood boil. I'm an animal lover and care strongly about the natural world and our impact on nature. Recently, there have been a lot of stories about the benefits of trophy hunting, claiming that it is beneficial to conservation efforts and helps those living in communities alongside these magnificent animals. I've teamed up with Humane Society International, who are advocating for a ban on the trade in hunting trophies, to explore how the trophy hunting industry operates, the impact it has on species, habitats and communities, and why the proposed ban on trophy hunting imports and exports is the right thing to do. What do we mean by a hunting trophy? Well, a trophy is a body part taken from an animal that has been hunted as a souvenir. Something like this. Every year, thousands of endangered animals, including elephants, giraffes and lions, are hunted and trophies like this one traded around the world. The UK still allows hunting trophies like these to be imported and exported, even as the animals that are targeted by the trophy hunting industry continue to decline in numbers, pushing them closer to extinction. But how do trophies like these get to the UK? And how does the industry work? And what's behind the conservation claims? There exists in the world wealthy individuals, predominantly Westerners, who seek pleasure from killing rare and endangered animals so they can display their body parts as mm. trophies in their houses. Every year, the trophy hunting industry meet in large conventions and auction off hunts for thousands of animals and millions of dollars. Many of the species targeted by hunters are already at risk of extinction due to human activity. Loss of habitat, climate change and poaching have pushed some of the world's most iconic animals to the brink. Yet, hunting these animals purely for fun continues. Money goes to a hunt operator and to the local government for permits. However, money rarely makes it to conservation efforts or to the hands of local people living alongside the animals. There is little real investment in livelihoods or long-term sustainable development. Our typical trophy hunter may like to think that he or she is helping conservation efforts. In fact, quotas are kept at unsustainably high levels, are not based in science or biologically relevant to the species. Trophy hunters are often inexperienced, meaning animals can be wounded and escape, either bleeding to death or suffering for a long time before eventually being found and killed. And this is what the hunt is really all about. A neo-colonial selfie opportunity. A chance for someone to live out a fantasy from a bygone age at the expense of a magnificent animal. Trophies are then transported around the world to the hunters' home countries. This happens over and over again, thousands of times a year. One trophy is rarely enough, and hunters will go on many hunts, killing more and more animals, targeting the largest and most rare, those with the biggest tusks and horns taking the strongest animals out of the gene pool. This industry is only possible because countries allow hunters to import and export mementos of their deadly holidays. So let's close our borders to this cruelty once and for all. That's how the trophy hunting industry works. Let's take a deeper look into the claims made by the trophy hunting industry. Joining me now is Dr. Fred Berkovich, one of the world's foremost giraffe experts. Thank you for joining us, Fred. You've been working in conservation for much of your life, and in particular, studying the giraffe. People don't think of the giraffe as endangered. Can you tell us what is wrong with trophy hunting from your perspective? So when people think of trophy hunting, 
they oftentimes think of, well, there's a head or a rug. But most of the parts of the giraffe that are exported are not a head or a rug. If I wanted to today, I could buy a giraffe leg bone with an intricate carving showing zebra on it. I would have no idea whether that leg bone came from a giraffe that was killed legally for trophy hunting or illegally. Trophy hunting legitimizes poaching and provides an avenue for the export of illegally killed giraffes. Thank you very much, Fred. And joining me now is Dr. Teresa Telecki. Hi, Teresa. Why aren't the current regulations working? Firstly, we know that lions living in protected areas and being studied by scientists are being lured out of those protected areas and killed in hunting zones, and that's a problem. Secondly, we know that governments are granting hunting permits based on faulty information provided to them by the trophy hunting industry itself. And lastly, we know that the very people who are setting hunting quotas, and hunting quotas are how many animals can be killed in a year. The very people who are setting those hunting quotas rely on money from the trophy hunting industry for their jobs, and that's a problem as well. In a time where a million wild plant and animal species are threatened with extinction, we can no longer support this industry. It's an idea uh, whose time has come to be abandoned. Let's not use communities to say that uh, we are doing trophy hunting for communities. I personally come from a community that uh, uh, has lived in a conservation area. Communities have come out very strongly everywhere to say, no, it doesn't help them. I really believe that there are lots of alternatives to trophy hunting. There are other alternatives that are more sustainable and that can also involve, you know, lots of affected communities, communities near national parks and communities in wildlife rich areas. Uh, some of these alternatives include uh, ecotourism, uh, photographic tourism, because I really feel that those kinds of tourism, they involve most of community members in terms of job creation. Yeah, as an environmentalist, you know, based in, in the global south, I would really urge the government not to support trophy hunting. Since large-scale trophy hunting began in colonial times, and ever since a price was placed on the heads of these magnificent animals, we have seen a catastrophic decline in populations. We cannot continue to support an industry which profits from the death of rare animals and exploits the natural world for short-term gain. That's why we're calling on the UK government to ban the import and export of hunting trophies and end its involvement in this outdated practice. <laughs>